Okay, uh, I wanted to go over the nacelle fitting. Uh, I think I figured out how to do it a much easier way than uh, my previous videos. Uh, I go ahead and install the overwing fairing, cutting out the clearance hole before I do for the rack gear, and then it requires a little bit of extra trim uh, to get it to fit on here, but I have uh, a total of five screws. It's hard to see. Installing that just like the, the previous video. So I get to this stage, uh, get my nacelle cover, and I take off the uh, lower fairing part of it, lower half. Some of the glue joints these uh, guys made were as good as a tape joint. Okay, I set that aside, and, and uh, just like in the previous video, I think I, I talk about grinding this wooden block down so it's pretty much uh, flush on the ends. I'll make a line here. I uh, grind a grind a majority of that away uh, where I colored it black so it comes to a point at each end and you want to try to make sure this thing is flat relative to the back of this frame here and that's because that's going to be flat with the back of the cell so you can see in this video that we've got a slight angle problem, so I'm going to try to correct that angle problem as much as I can too. I'll do that with the Dremel tool. Okay, I've pretty much ground the majority of that uh, little block away. Now, I'm going to take my nacelle and I'm going to install the spinner. That's the first thing. We've got these new plastic spinners out if you don't have them. Uh, if you have some of the older kits, so you may want to order a, a, a plastic spinner from the website or at least send me an email. Uh, I don't have them on the website just yet, but I have had these in stock but they they've gone pretty quickly and I'm supposed to get a bunch more here if the plastic spinners spin true which really helps uh, so I'll install this the cell cover uh, on my nacelle, I, I have made note that, the, that these newer nacelle covers from the new manufacturers are a little bit bigger. I don't think there's a interference problem back here anymore, so you can uh, keep this beauty washer. I did notice that there is a little bit more interference problem up here, so I, I took my Dremel and kind of ground these, these tops off a little bit and uh, kind of tried to drop them down to give you a little bit more clearance in there between the nacelle cover and the uh, uh, framework, the, the frames. So once, once I get it approximately in place, I'll clamp the, well, let me start over again. Sorry guys. Uh, the, next, the next thing I do is where these two holes are on the bottom, I'll mark that on the top and drill one hole right in the middle on the top and that will give me access to uh, reach those holes and I can back drill those holes now on the so I just get that one hole in top in the center and then from the bottom I can actually back drill these two holes from the bottom and now I can back drill these two holes from the top through that one hole that makes it a lot easier. 
So I install my nacelle cover. I clamp the back in place. The block in the back on these uh, the last several kits I've got seem to be pretty close to the right elevation. Uh, you can remove this plastic gear. It usually makes it easier to, to fit this stuff. I'll just go ahead and push this on the spindle axle making sure it's all the way on and now I can adjust this the cell cover by keeping it centered as best I can on the spinner and also keeping my gap consistent. This is this one's gaps closed down pretty good. That's okay. I'll just have to trim that. I'm gonna get my fore and aft about right. I like to cheat them a little bit forward to keep that gap a little narrow. I'm gonna clamp the back end. I think I can I have to do a little bit, a lot of trimming here, but I think I can get that to all work out in that position there. So once I, I, I got that, I'm going to try to remove it without moving that back, without moving that back clamp. I'm going to remove it off the, the cell spindle. I'm gonna. I have a real thin piece of piano wire. I've, I've uh, filed a chisel point on the top of it, uh, just to get some something sharp. I'm gonna chuck that up in my drill. Then I'm gonna hold the the front like I was before, uh, perfectly centered on the spindle. So I know that's right. I'm going to look through here. Find that hole way down in there. Get my hand out of the way, making sure it's centered on that spindle. I mean on the spinner. I'm going to go ahead and back drill that hole. Get it back in the light, see if I can't look through there and find the second hole. I just kind of verified that I could still see through that first hole while I was drilling that second hole. And again, try not to make sure you move anything relative to anything. I'm going to try to get one of these back holes in here, back drill. One of these back holes. Just slide it through that one hole you made in the top. Hold that in place. Put a drill bit in that hole to make sure that first one's centered while I drill the second one. Same thing, just go through the single hole I made in top. Through the back drill it. Now 
And uh, just as before I size those up with about a tenth of an inch drill bit. And these, this one wasn't too bad, not too far from the original holes. This actually, this bottom one went right through the original holes. I'm going to size those up. And that gets those holes drilled in pretty quick order. Put it on, uh, screw it in place. This hole on this side needs to be repositioned. This can be done with a fairly big bit because it, it, it gets covered up. And go ahead and, and slide this on and then refit this gap as necessary to get you nice uh, good clearances. And that'll, and that'll be a lot quicker than the, the previous method of getting these holes all lined up. You can, of course, just back drill and screw on the lower bearing.